Fran, I'm going to hand over to you and thank you very much for taking the time to come and share your research with us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alison. I'm delighted to be asked along today um, to, 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 to take part in this um, seminar. Um, it's called IC, uh, ICT Systems of Strangle Relationship Based Practice for Social Workers in Northern Ireland. For anybody who doesn't know me, and there's quite a few people probably online today who do know me, and quite a few people who have taken part in this study. But for those of you who don't, I, my name is Brian Crossan. I'm a hospital social worker. I'm based in Alton Galvin Hospital, um, hospital social work team. I previously worked in residential childcare, and I had a spell in um, palliative care last year. I am also a practice teacher with the Western Trust and have an interest in student and learning development. But today I am here to talk about the four years that I haven't been at work when I've been out studying and doing a, some research. Uh, and I'm also going to be joined uh, as one of the participants today by my um, a tutor, Dr. Tony McGinn from the University of Ulster, who will hopefully interject and keep us right as time goes on. But today's uh, work is going to be based around the recent thesis that I um, have done the Ulster University. So this is um, some of the some learning from this work and some of the some of the more interesting parts that I felt that we might enjoy sharing with social workers across Northern Ireland. Um, I did make a commitment when I asked people to take part in this study that I would try and share the research as far and as wide as I possibly could and represent people's views as best I could and and and, and take as I say take it as, as big an audience as good as, as possible so that people social workers voices can be heard. So today we're going to be talking about um the barriers within the, uh, our systems to prevent many of us and social workers spending time and getting to spend time with service users types of barriers on the current systems and how they manifest. Some of that, this will be very familiar to people. Other people, it will be quite new and some of the barriers of this study on Earth are, are, are very new. What uh, encompassed program, uh, sorry, are all social work responses to the barriers to, and the threats to pose to relationship-based practice? What the Encompass program might offer or change for social workers and service users and the role of social workers in the design and implementation of our future systems. So today's, uh, before before I'll go into that, I wanted just to give everybody a wee bit of um, background and do my research, um, and because because I think it's important to see why I I uh, undertook this, what it was, how I went about it, and what I found. And the way for me for some time has been. Uh, that, that I've been involved, I've been a social worker now almost 20 years, and uh, I suppose what has happened, I've seen a lot of change. Some policy changes come on board, um, uh, so, some legislation come on board, and I always felt that social workers were very much left behind. I felt that we didn't do well when it came to changes. I think that um, I always found that we were just proportionally uh, administering more of the work than some of the other professionals, and this has led to a lot of bureaucracy. I am old enough uh, to go, have been through the care management times, Unicini, NISAT, and just as I was leaving my, my post in 2019, um, I, we were faced with the deprivation of liberty with an, um, a legislation, uh, Mental Capacity Act. And again, I can see a, a new suite of forms, extra responsibilities being placed upon up, upon social workers, and I can see it all happening again. What I did find that, I, the, from a digital point of view, the Encompass program was coming on board, and I wanted to be part of some type of changes. At that time, I didn't envisage myself doing a PhD. I felt that it would probably be part of the Encompass program and trying to influence it as best I could good for social workers, but the opportunity came uh, and, and, and uh, we were able to partner with Encompass. So what so what exactly is my study, uh, rather than the what? So we've I've interviewed 126 social workers across Northern Ireland using telephone interviews. 
and the, these interviews were about their current range of ICT and administration systems. This is going across all five health and social care trusts in Northern Ireland. So I will show you the representation and breakdown of that in, in the later slide. It took me eight months to gather all this data. So while it, at this time, um, we're, I'm looking at for telephone interviews across all five care trusts. For those people who are interested in methodologies out there, um, this took the form of a snowball sampling technique, which is a really a fancy terminology for when I ask one person to participate, I would ask that participant to try to recruit other participants who had maybe a shared interest, had something to say, uh, and, uh, and a voice, uh, and or an interest really in this particular topic area. It took me four years to do the PhD. Some may, be, some may argue that I've only just got it over the line. It's almost coming for four and a half years. So it's a big commitment, a big of time of my life. So a little bit more about the, 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 the project itself. It was done through an Encompass program. And I always start with this quotation from our then health minister, Robin Swan. There was a, a ready and a mission there that we were calling time on the current situation of multiple aging systems and a large reliance on the paper record. So from the very top, there there was a, a um, there was there was a strong um, volition for change. For me, um, that didn't really go far enough. It didn't wasn't unique enough for social work. Um, I thought that maybe we were experiencing our ICT and administration systems very differently. And I wanted a unique study that captured social workers' voices. And um, so that, that was my big motivation at, at that time. Originally, I felt the study would be would be around the build of Encompass programs and, tr and trying to get to and record social workers' views on how we were going to go forward. But it ended up that with the timing that, that I was going to actually end up capturing the current range of um, systems that we were using. So this is almost like a benchmark of what we're actually using now on the uh, on these views. And as you go through, as I go through these slides, it, it's, it's not going to be just as dry as uh, uh, just talking about particular systems. This is better than that, or this social workers' favorite. The systems and social workers' views are really probably a bit of a microcosm of how social workers feel about social work. And, and 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 their feelings and how they manifest and, and you'll see this as a as a as the slide go on here today folks so to partner with encompass we had to agree a number of objectives and this is around really around technology so these were agreed objectives at the time what social workers feel were important what's important about technology how useful and easiest to use, and these are these are paradigms um, which come from a model called a technology acceptance model, where people um, often uh, relate to technology if they find it useful and it's easy to use. The capabilities and availability of technology, so our own digital capabilities and how availability, how available rather that was. And again, that was a bit of a moving feast because whilst I was carrying out this study, COVID-19 came in the midst of it all and social workers all of a sudden had better access to technology and used te different types of technology to breach some of those gaps that were found at that particular time. And finally, the future of ICT, what, what social workers would like from their, their, their ICT in the future? What uh, what would they like uh, in terms of a technology? Would it help them do their job better? If again, if anybody out there is in the methodologies, uh, this was a mixed method study, quantitative on the on the on the left hand side. So there's open ended questions. Do you like? Tell me more. Um, can I ask you more more about that? And qualitative questions. Give me numbers, stats, figures, yes, no's. So that's the the, the two the two the two parts we were doing during the telephone interview. The interviews lasted between twenty and twenty five minutes on average. Periodically, 
and myself and uh, Dr. Tony McGinn would come together and we would analyze the data and the, the freedom of using a grounded theory approach means that you can adjust some of the questions to go after the more interesting data. For example, if we were looking at something like, like GDPR would come up, we could actually include a question about GDPR and try and probe that with the next round of respondents. So you can see there's there was a number of times, I think, we, we, at the end up we had three or four different sessions for what, what they call data iteration, where that really means that, that we're, we're looking at uh, the questions, we're looking uh, to build theory, and we're looking to go after the most interesting results and findings that we can. And we had that freedom within this methodology. Everybody wants to know how much their trust can, uh, took part in the study. It's one of those questions I get time and time again. No one asked us, or was I involved, or how many, or was my trust well enough represented? And we, we've we done a reasonably good job at that, I think. Um, out of the 126, and uh, we compared against the Northern Ireland Social uh, Care Census of 2022, and we can see that each trust is fairly well represented uh, within the study. Slightly biased in my part again to the Western Trust, slightly more than the, but but um, you'll forgive me for that. Directorate again a lot a, a lot more bias coming on my part I'm from the primary care and older people's directorate. So we we do have disproportionately more um, participants from that directorate um, than we set out. Again, a lot of this can be out of your control when you're running snowball samples and you're looking for participants to come forward. You may set up samples, but the, more people may or may not come for one or other director. So we're we're well overrepresented in, in uh, primary care and older people and underrepresented in women's and children's. Notwithstanding, 47 social workers from the women's and children's director is still pretty, pretty good. And I'm pretty happy with that. So. Okay, so really the findings of this study are based around three big findings. And I'm really want to just talk about one of them today, but I'll, I'll, um, barriers to practice. So the barriers to practice is, is the finding, one of the biggest findings we're finding. Social workers have multiple barriers within their current range of ICT and administration systems. And that could be paper records as well. Uh, to stop them practicing with frontline uh, service users. So our systems contain barriers. The accessibility part of that became a standalone finding in terms of uh, this was something that was really the ground in theory that there was multiple accessibility problems and I will touch on them just on a, on a later slide. And, and one of the other big, big findings that was very, very clear from the start and it was saturated in much of the data was the volition for social workers to have a standardized system. So we have, we have that volition for that one standardized system, not these multiple systems that we're working with on presently. So that volition was there from social workers, um, really from, from, from the first to the last person I've interviewed. So what's the types of barriers? Some of the types of barriers are bureaucracy, multiple systems, poorly performing systems, and integration and redundancy. Bureaucracy probably is straightforward. A lot of people experience multiple, multiple parts of bureaucracy. If anybody's listening from the hospital social work team, they'll hear me screaming mostly times in the corner, crying about how much bureaucracy that, that um, some of our, our current range of ICT administrations and paper systems. The multiple systems, the multiple the multiple chiefs that we have within our current range of systems. Purely performance systems, like some of these systems do not give us what we need. And that often means we have to go across numbers of systems to get more information. 
integration and redundancy was one that I didn't particularly think of, but uh, again, this has come from social workers on the ground, and I'm, I'm saying many of you here today, where we're, we always, we're seeing to be in this flux of we're either integrating the system or making our system redundant. And that goes back to all, all sorts of systems, Paris being one of the examples. So for example, um, our Southeastern Trust Friends never seen Paris, Belfast Trust, um, had Paris fully integrated for some time. In the Western Trust, we had some parts of Paris integrated. Northern Trust and Southern Trust were the same. So this sort of state of flux of the haves and the haves nots. And I purposely didn't go into a lot of digital divides. Within my study, I didn't go into age or gender, but certainly from a geographical point of view, um, this is interesting that there's certain, certain um, trusts who have different parts of uh, technology, should that be hardware, software, when, and, and that can be, be difficult when you have the, this integration. And again, we're seeing it right over within Compass now, when we're, well, there's people who will have Encompass for a period of time and others won't. And and I know if, if there was somebody here uh, from an ICT designer or somebody from Compass, they would say this is naturally part of the integration part and the data migration part. But nonetheless, it, it makes it difficult. And the longer that goes on, the, the, the more barriers it creates. This is a wee snap study of the last 38 people who I interviewed. Again, the ground of theory gives me the, the freedom to, to carry out these study and these types of study and make inferences um, on, on some of, of the qualitative data that I was seeing. So, on the left hand side, these are the types of examples that I was getting from the qualitative data. So I ran a, just a, a survey just across the last 38 people. And we can see that the, this is just about the barrier of duplication. So we're talking about, do we get consent from service users on multiple occasions? 29 out of the 38 saying yes. Using repetitive forms, multiple referral systems. Re-entering was my favorite, re-entering service user demographics on multiple occasions. Recording the same information across systems handwritten notes and that are typed up. So this is just, we can just see the, the, how widespread um, this type of duplication is within our systems and how, uh, and how frustrating it can be for social workers. So that brings me to really social workers' feelings around our systems at the moment. We're, we're, what, are, what, are social, what, are, what are What are social workers uh, feelings around um, their, their current range of ICT systems. And uh, I'll just go through some of these, uh, just to highlight what the, the workforce and is coming back to me at this present time. There's a feeling of powerless, powerlessness and ambivalence. So people, people just feel so, so uh, disheartened by the, these types of systems that they feel that they don't have any options and that's the ambivalence. We can't do anything, Brian. We can't change anything. We're just going to have to suck it up. This is, this is just part of it. Some people are questioning why they came into the profession, particularly maybe some of the younger students and, uh, who, who maybe studied and, and the, the expectations are not matching up. All their senses of frustration, bewilderment, a sense of anxiety due to fear and litigation, this record everything culture that's, that's, that's perpetuating within social work. Obviously, there's disillusionment from our social workers, leading to some frustration. Others feel that the systems and, and how they're, they're um, managed makes them feel removed from the organization and not respected. Social workers witnessing inefficiencies and wastage. And a disconnect between social workers and employers and what's deemed reasonable. This also has led many social workers to feeling guilty and regretful that they can't spend time with service users because they've got demands and 
and the, this so people are all, almost trying to wear two hats. And we see that all, quite often where social workers are, are very much torn and they're taking the uh, work home with them. They're spending extra time in the office. They, they've got this guilt complex because they're, they're, try, they're trying to um, be, be all things to all people, if you like. And it's worst case, people are actually, uh, there's avoidance here. And, and that, that was quite alarming finding some people actually are trying to avoid face-to-face -face work because of the extra administration that, that it creates and paperwork that it creates. So that's a really um, alarming um, um, piece of information that the study, uh, this is, the, the health warning this is not widespread. Uh, uh, this is something that some social workers had implemented during the conversations. And others um, try and build what they call workarounds, where basically they're trying to circumnavigate systems with the, where they're trying to build workarounds within their ICT administration systems um, so that they're easier to use, they're a lot more, they're a lot user friendly. They're trying to cut out pages of work. They're trying to copy and paste, if you like. They're trying to find easier ways just to survive in terms of uh, um, have uh, holding down a job and having some type of normality. Now, now when this comes to for standardisation, some of these reports maybe may not, aren't up to standard and maybe not all the information's recorded, but it's enough to get by. So that's been the the, the whole that whole sense of workarounds is, is something that came up both in the literature review that I carried out and within the social workers that I spoke to. So just at this point, does anybody? want to come on at this point in time um, and ask any questions or any comments or views just as I take a wee pause here. Hello. Hi. Is that Tony trying to speak? Yeah, go ahead Tony. Uh, I was just thinking what are you going to do about all this Brian? <laughs> <laughs> Is that, a, is, that, uh, is, that a, is that a really is, question or, or is that, is, is, is that a, a statement? Uh, no, I'm hoping, no, the, hopefully there is some questions there. Okay, Suzanne. orders. Sorry, I can't. If you, um, I think there's a wee bit of a background noise, there, Suzanne. If you want to go yes. again there, I think she's maybe gone now. Um, okay. Um, uh, is there any other comments from anyone else who wants to come on at this point in time? Can I, I ask a question, Brian? Yes, go ahead, John. John. Brian, how receptive do you think our senior management likely to be to your findings? Well, at, the, at this point in time, I have tried to share it as far and wide as I can, and I will touch on some of some of uh, that a little more at the end. Um, I, I think when you have a piece of research, John, and not anecdotal evidence or Brian Cross and Thinks or John Boyle Thinks, I think that it gives you a bit more kudos and standing, and if you have a piece of robust uh, research at, at, at certainly making people sit up and think. Also, it probably resonates with a lot of the 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 new thinking around safe staffing, and people can't ignore that there's problems with recruitment and retention. I think this is a piece of that jigsaw, John. I think that people's because the ICT and administration systems and their bureaucracy and the administration. Are rampant. I do think that that is playing on the our, our problems of recruiting and retaining staff. So if people are interested in re recruiting and retaining staff and looking at those wider issues why people are, are leaving social work, then um, I think I think that the, uh, it's important that people are receptive at the highest level. No, Just, I really hope that's the case, Brian. Uh, I do get a sense though, across the systems, particularly I think with senior management, there's a a confusion between the the menu and the meal. You know, the, the signifier and the signified. 
Yeah. Um, you know, so long as all the uh, paperwork is in place and that means we're doing great work. Yeah. And I think that's, again, that's something that today's I wanted to talk about is the importance of relationship-based social work. Uh, I've just put a slide up there, John, uh, that the average career uh, of a social worker is only seven and a half years. Yeah. Um, it's something that's quite shocking that the, for us. Now, that notwithstanding, that doesn't capture people who move up the ladder or in the senior positions. But for people who are doing uh, a two-year or three-year degree and an AYE year, it's not giving you a particularly long career in social work. And we're at this point in time, we seem to be hemorrhaging social workers and we find it very difficult to recruit and retain. Um, I do think um, this, this, this piece of work here is part of the problem. I mean, there's wider issues within the social work, but I do think this um, bureaucracy and administration um, is a big part of it. Okay, so just again, um, what I was talking about with John there is the threat to relationship-based practice. Um, I'm not going to read out all of these quotations, but I think I'll just give people time as I'm going through here. This was um, an illustration that I had looked at um, from Gibson 2017. Uh, it's now feeling like an old quotation. When I started in 2019, it seemed quite fresh, but um, times marched on. But um, it's, I think it tells, the, it shows to me that, that we are in a bit of an identity crisis here at the minute from social administrator or social worker. If you look on the left hand side and then look at on the right hand side, and you can read um, both both columns there. And if you look at that, you, you're starting to see where do I fit, fit in neatly here? Where, where which, am I more social work, or am I social, more social administrator or more social worker? And I think aspirationally, everybody would like to feel that they're on the right hand column where they're more social worker, but maybe... Okay, I thought of the question there. Uh, I think if everybody was honest, a lot of us have mo are more on the left-hand side where we tend to be bowed by procedures. We do, we have, we do a lot of um, referrals to services, documents, assessments, organizational needs and that was again one of the big things that came through that that, that we've sort of moved or i don't know if we ever got that person-centered um approach but we certainly it's, it's a we were loving with a very much an organizational centered approach for ma many social work jobs at the minute uh where, where we accountability and auditing and governance take precedence now on the right hand side we see, we talk about interpersonal skills, therapeutic support, relationship building, direct work with individual groups, advocacy, respect for diversity, and unfortunately, a lot of that a lot of that work tends to be form a, a minor part of our role at the minute, uh, or certainly a, a diminishing part of our role at the minute, and. I would suppose that in terms of that there, even the use of theory and method and research, I'm thinking about social work students that I teach at the minute and social work students that we mentor 
those are the types of issues that we're looking at social work students, but the, the actual job that they're going on on the left hand side is more reflective of a social work administration system. And that was very, very clear amongst a large majority of the, the people that I spoke to in this study, uh, who felt that they, that they had they'd be, they'd very much come in with this very much an audit culture and administration was taking precedence, just like John had said there previously. Backwards instead of forwards. So you kind of at this identity erosion, and you're trying to find the social worker, but like in the Where's Wally, we've got the identity. We're, you're trying to you're you've got this identity erosion um, coming through because of the multiple buyers in the systems. We don't we don't know now where, where the social worker lies, and we're at, we're often found asking ourselves, what is unique about social workers? What what unique? Uh, what is unique about our job or our role? What are we bringing to the party that's different from other professionals? And that's all that's been a problem historically for social workers, and um, maybe possibly the downfall of social workers. Um, my literature review would suggest that social workers have always had a very difficult relationship with social work, or rather technology, <laughs> maybe social work as well, but what of technology and new systems. Many of the systems that have been brought in to social work teams have not necessarily augmented or made the job easier. And a lot of these systems, unfortunately, have meant that they're, they're based around um, performance and capturing data and governance issues. So, so uh, that again, that, that identity erosion of when we're bringing new technology in, who is it for? So there's a long held suspicion among social workers about new technology, who's it for, how can it help me, how will it enable me to do my job better. So that that that, that is a big problem. Again, that's something that has come through um, again and again to the social workers that I spoke to. So you often find if you're, if you're sitting there going, right, what is unique? This is something that a lot of social workers are feeling that their, their job isn't as unique as they like. And this certainly doesn't match the expectations of what they, they study to be. I'm going to touch a little bit on accessibility issues, even though it was a separate finding, it also is uh, became one of the key barriers. And it's not something that I had particularly experienced in my own role, but uh, as I spoke to um, some of the social workers, particularly at the Belfast Trust, and the trusts that bisect the Belfast Trust, accessibility and going across trusts tended, tended to be a, a major issue. One of the big parts of that was protecting privacy and confidentiality. So at times, social workers found that we were coming up against buyers in terms of getting good information at, readily at, at, uh, at times. And that's, and these, sometimes these barriers would manifest in, in very difficult situations. For example, an out of our social workers, um, uh, approved social workers, where they needed access to good information in a timely manner. And if they had to go across trusts, there, were, there was lots of uh, problems with GDPR, systems not talking to each other, uh, outdated systems. Uh, so even, for example, going across trusts, and hospitals and getting that, that key information that you need to make good, timely, well-informed, professional decisions wasn't always there. So that was that that was a major problem. That whole privacy and confidentiality uh, as a barrier, and that that's something that that came up time and time again. Professional issues with sharing information. We're not good at sharing information, uh, but some professionals do have that, that uh, ownership mindset, uh, whether that's either they, they're, they're slow to share information or this not, they don't make it as easy and readily available for people. So people have to work hard for it. Uh, and again, that causes all sorts of problems around accessibility. For such a small country um, uh, in Northern Ireland, we have a lot of number of regional differences 
So we're all doing different things across the regions. Uh, with the Western Trust, the Southern Trust, we're, we have a lot of regional differences. Um, so some people have different systems, some people have to augment forms, some people have to change forms. All our systems don't talk to each other. And, and that is why we're in this sort of uh, state of, of trying to transfer digitally at, at the minute. But for those who've been working on it a long time, it can be very frustrating. And again, uh, I, I go back to the Belfast Trust and people who move across trusts up there, there tends to be major problems in terms of access and information timely and, uh, and, and getting other people to look information up for you because maybe you have an older system or a newer system or maybe that you have to get access to old paper records that haven't been um, migrated. So that again, that's that's something that has become through an accessibility. And our hardware and infrastructure, I touched it on, uh, on earlier on there, that we, people have different access to different hardware and, inf and infrastructure, even in this a small region. So that causes all sorts of problems. Um, and up until uh, COVID-19, some of our some of social workers reported they didn't even have um, laptops or mobile phones at that point in time. So COVID-19 has been a, a sort of a, a mini revolution for some social worker teams where they've accessed even what we're doing to now, um, likes of Microsoft Teams and Zoom meetings weren't readily available, certainly not for all um, social workers on the ground where they might have been more available to managers. So that brings me on to the aspirations of what social workers think Encompass can and can change. So it's easy to maybe sometimes get excited about Encompass because it's a new digital record and you're hoping it's going to solve a lot of these problems. So social workers are, are, are well, I wouldn't say excited, maybe a strong word, but they're, they're optimistic that there will be some gains by going to the Encompass system. So we're looking at thinking like eliminate one system, eliminate, eliminating some of those regional differences that we talked about. Better accessibility. From what I can glean so far, that it looks like there's going to be better accessibility, certainly to health care records and patient records. Um, so that's going to be something that, that people aren't going to have to go across as many multiple systems if that data migration uh, can take place. The quality of te technology and infrastructure. So we're hoping that the social workers feel that there may be a, there may be an upside to this. We may get better technology. We may get better infrastructure. Removing the paper, my favorite again. Uh, so we're not going to have as many paper records or, 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 or aspirationally, at least we'll try to be remove the paper records, certainly from client records. It'd be less time consuming and more intuitive. So what do I mean by that? For just it's the small sort of nuances of, of um, some of our systems, the likes of Paris, the likes of ENISAT, I haven't used Unichini in, in some time, but the, some of these systems are very, very cumbersome. They don't have spell checks. The 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 demographics are don't come with you. You're having to repetitively put information on all the time. So we're hoping that these systems are a bit more intelligent, uh, and, and intuitive, and uh, reflect the nuances of the social work job that our systems really don't at the minute. And again, this is something that one of the social workers um, from the Western Trust, I think, brought to me was about integration. He said, Brian, every time something new, it shouldn't mean something extra. And I, I didn't really understand that. But it's really about integration. So every time a new policy comes on board or there's a new direction, or we get a new suite of forms which are scaffolded on the side of what already a social worker does. And that can be very, very frustrating and soul destroying when social workers are already feeling very overwhelmed by uh, all, all that they have to do. Um, example from my own practice was the integration of the deprivation of liberty legislation, which brought about a new suite of forms 
and I'm sure there's many other examples, but something new did mean something extra, not only just in the role, but of the administration and all the, all the information that, that lies within systems and that we already use wasn't used to populate the, this, these forms. So the something new, something extra should be, is really about integration. Again, uh, uh, just to go back on the other point was about just one system. And this is the word cloud that I've taken from, from, from um, uh, the social workers. Um, if, you, if you read it backwards, or re read it backwards, it's just one system. So this is, these are the these are the qualitative data that have, uh, we have been scrunched together and look at the key words within the study. And if you can see how many times just one system has been um, proliferated within the, the center of this diagram. And what do social workers think Encompass can change? Social workers are savvy and often think that it's not going to curb all bureaucracy. It's not going to maybe be the panacea that we think it can or might be. It won't remove all administrative duties. We're going to have, it's not going to change the implementation phase and it hasn't changed really, and my, certainly in my opinion, it hasn't changed the implementation phase of the haves and the haves nots. So we have people who have got access to Encompass at this point in time, or it's been better than and the have nots. And we know already there's been trouble uh, with bringing the family and child care side of the house over as well. So even in the, even in the likes of the Southeastern and Belfast Trust, we still haven't resolved the problems with um, family and child care systems. Systems that self-govern and self-report in governance. And again, this is something that didn't necessarily spring to mind so we want systems that capture our governance uh, and that we don't have to um, self-report governance. So social workers said, we're constantly being asked for statistics. Why can't we have a system that capture these statistics, stats within the build? Multi-disciplinary tensions and social workers left to administer um, the system. So a lot of social workers still think that no matter what we do, no matter what we change, the administration of our tasks will be largely left to them. And finally, work in silos. Just want to bring anybody in at the moment who has any views on um, the Encompass change or any agrees or disagrees with what's been said here. Anybody want to come in at this point? Or? And there's a few wee comments on the chat. I don't know okay. if you've seen them. Um, sorry, I'm just scrolling back here. So um, we started in Compass um, in the past two weeks in the Belfast Trust and it's made things so difficult. Um, it's worrying to hear that in Compass it's made things difficult, difficult when we were told how this will help coming into the Western Trust in spring 25. No, they're just about in Compass. There are some okay. Other. Yeah. And I think any any change in any system uh, is going to be difficult and we're, we're all not great with things that are new because it takes us away from what we know and trust um but i think that we would like to think that when things did better and it would improve um but i certainly Alison, the social workers uh, with who i spoke to in this study are pragmatic enough and probably had seen enough and within their careers to know that there's wider issues than their, the, uh, within the social work program rather than just Encompass. And Encompass won't be able to solve all our ills within the social work profession. Okay. Brian, can I ask uh, any positives or, or good things that come out of the study as to what's going on with social work at the moment and, and ICT? Yeah, well, that just it kind of uh, it brings me uh, on the next slide, neatly, Tony. Probably that there's a volition amongst many uh, of the social workers um, who want more control and input, uh, and increasingly social workers feel that they have 
better expertise in technology. Uh, we, we have a, digitally, a more digitally capable workforce and, and they, are, they are keen to, to uh, participate and uh, change systems as best they can. So I think in terms of uh, uh, certainly social workers who want to get on board and design systems, there's certainly more, there's more appetite that as long as the systems can be seen to, to, to be, be useful and, be, and easy to use and are, and are not around, not, not around based around governance, but more about trying to, to augment the job that they already do. Hmm. Anybody else folks just at that point in time now? Brian, Suzanne Cunningham has a wee question, you know, just earlier. Um, yeah. Do you have any advantages of ICT systems? Um, we would use data as part of an assessment process and we have to input it, input it to get it back, input it in to get it back, back out again. Um, can be useful evidence based to support decision making, not supporting more ICT systems, but there has to be some advantages if we're using it. I, I I don't think that that anybody's arguing that that ICT can be useful, um, and uh, in terms of um, promoting social work, and uh, I th I think that I certainly would, uh, and many social workers would be strong advocates of it. I suppose what today is about really is about the multiple buyers with and the current range of ICT systems that we found, um, and and. There's there's many an opportunity going forward, um, as as we try and build better ICT for social workers, and um, we can we, we start to look at things like, uh, um, big data and what 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 the potentials are, and uh, and dare I say it, uh, safe use of some type of artificial intelligence. I don't think anybody's arguing that that all, all ICT is bad. But I think what we can take away from today is that the current range of systems presently don't work and they need reforms. Okay. So, the, so, so some, just a bit on that there, we see that some of the social workers are, have been quite innovative. And, we, and this is also captured within the study. Um, we've got some examples here. We've kind of abandoned and just designed their own and tried to make it work for our service users. I would say having champions for technology, so every team has their own champion. Because we are so administrative, it has actually pushed us onto a position of smarter working. So from that point of view, we've come a long way. So as I wrap up, um, I want to I want to sort of um reflect on the study and where where we are um, and where we've come from. And and uh, my study has taken place approximately 10 years um, from the social work strategy in 2012, which is, I remember, probably been uh, launched in the Silver Birch down in Oma. And I came away quite excited that day in 2012, when we talked about reducing unnecessary bureaucracy and the proactive use of technology. So, so fast forward on further 10 years down the line, and we talk about the bureaucracy and workload pressure that the Social work, Workforce Review talks about, and how we need to improve the, the use of technology. So 10 years on, I don't think we've made a lot of gains, and not a lot has changed. And arguably, maybe in terms of reducing bureaucracy and making better use of technology, I would argue certainly that we failed as a profession and we need to do a lot better in, in terms of tackling tackle these two uh, crucial issues. I know some trusts are moving towards this again uh, and, and we've, there's been some groups set up in terms of looking at um, bureaucracy, unnecessary bureaucracy, and trying to um, set up working groups again. And that's probably a lot of this comes around because we're under so much pressure as, as a profession 
and we're, we're, we are uh, struggling to recruit and retain social workers. So I would like to think that we're benchmarking our current ICT and administration systems once again, and hoping that within 10 years time, we have improved. So we'll be talking about the next, next seminar uh, on Monday, say for an effective staffing. I think this um, study feeds into that as piece a, a part of the jigsaw. What will we be ta talking about in 2032? Northern Ireland Social Work Specific Legislation as planned for safe staffing across the governmental sector. So we're talking about those issues around recruitment and retention. We have to sort of ask ourselves as a profession, who in social work is going to be who's challenging on that same bureaucracy? If we all sit and uh, take a time and think about that, do we know anybody at the, uh, who's, who's actually challenging unnecessary bureaucracy out there at the moment? Is there a champion? Is there someone? Is, is there someone who, who's championing this cause at the uh, present, other than myself and maybe uh, Niazwa uh, uh, out there at the moment? Is there anybody else within our systems we're talking about unnecessary bureaucracy, or has it become forgotten? Um, uh, from the social work strategy in 2012, and if, and if there is, who who's going to take the lead on this? Where's our leadership in, in terms of challenging this? So those are the type of things I want us to think about, and to take home today from this seminar, we need to start thinking about our bureaucratic systems and they threaten relationship-based social work. So if we are interested in maintaining our identity as social work practitioners, we need to think about the, our systems. We need to standardize to survive. And again, this is something that has come through in the study, that at, at this point in time, innovation is maybe just a wee bit a step too far for us. We need to get systems that can are intuitive, that are standardized, that can talk to each other first before we take the next steps. And we understand, and we can see it already in the chat today, there will be things that Compass can and can't change. The Compass isn't going to change social work forever in Northern Ireland. There will be some upsides and there will be some downsides to the Encompass that will give us better accessibility. But there's wider issues within social work which we touched on today, that we also need to look at. And for me, really, it's about challenging unnecessary bureaucracy and champion of social work and managerial participation. I always leave on this wee slide here, um, and I've taken it with me to a number of conferences, and, and every time I read it, I always feel it's impactful, because um, as, as I said at the start, when I embarked upon this piece of research and people give of their time and their energy uh, to me and on Saturday and Sunday mornings and um, look, maybe me pastoring people, they try to take part in the study and, and encouraging people. So I always said I would try to take the research far and wide and I always leave with this here that this, this, this work goes somewhere and people get to see what's really going on for social workers. If we don't do something about the way we work, I don't think people will know what a social worker does anymore. And that was by one of the um, social workers I interviewed from the Southeastern Trust. So if anybody has any final questions, um, I'll try and answer them as best I can. Um, um, I think James, James Draper from the Education Authority has a wee question. James, Lovely. do you want to ask it or do you want me to read it out? I can't see him. You, you, you can read it out, Alison. I read it out, okay. Um, so, hi, social worker in education here. The Education Authority are currently embarking in a digital in a digital transformation similar to Encompass. I sit on a working group involved in this. I was wondering, Brian, what are your main big ticket points of advice on problems to try and to avoid stroke opportunities to embrace? I, I sort of missed a wee bit of that last bit, Alison, so... Um, I'll just read. So what are your main big ticket points of advice on problems um, 
to try and avoid an opportunities to embrace. Okay, I think I, I will try to go back to my conclusions that um, that that we need to, we need to start streaming light and light in some of our systems. We've got to standardize some of them to survive. And we all know that there's unnecessary bureaucracy uh, and duplication inherent within these systems. And it's about making small gains, uh, James, uh, and, and trying to challenge those, those at the highest level. Um, and also pro trying to promote the, the digitalization as a positive. Um, I, I don't want today to come away. As, I know today was particularly focused upon buyers, but I do think there's many opportunities uh, when you, you digitalize, you minimize some of this duplication and it's trying to promote the upsides of that and uh, I'm trying to measure that in terms of the time that you actually get to spend the face to face. So anything that, that can identify and magnify the, the 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 uptake on, uh, or the the suppose the more more social workers having better time to spend face to face would be and uh, and if you can attribute that there to any digital adjunct or any 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 piece of technology that works, I think that there can be quite impactful. Okay. Anyone okay. else? Um, Siobhan has just said, Brian, I agree, 10 years on and nothing really has changed. Would it not be beneficial to have social workers who use the ICT systems assist in developing them to make it work for the benefits of all? Totally agree. Um, I think Compass for here probably would say we all got an opportunity to take part uh, as service user experts. And uh, I certainly I know that there's a number of people I would also temper with that with how much freedom the people were actually given because we were working with a, a, a digital record uh, in the form of Epic. So how much freedom people did get, get to change things. And I suppose there was a lot of cultural stuff. People wanted certain things and, and we, we can see through the family and child care side uh, a struggle, in the, a struggle in the, within the Epic program. That there are going to be there there has been problems, but I agree. I think social workers should should be leading from the front, and I mean that's another that would be another uh, lunchtime seminar on that there because the the champion and participation part is largely what I think we should be doing. I think social workers should be designing systems to promote and 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 having the, their identity and having the correct tools that that let them carry out the job. Not necessary tools that capture um, governance or, and provide information to the wider organization, though I, I, we can't necessarily get away from that at this point in time. Mm -hmm. Brian, I'll be able to share all the comments and on the chat with you anyway for you yeah. to look at them. Anybody else want to ask uh, any more before we? Just perhaps interject. I'm. Um... Uh, retired from social work. I've worked for 39 years, um, but still doing some consultancy work with the Leadership Centre. Yes. Um, we'll have to say an awful lot of um, what you've presented here, Brian, is, uh, you know, <laughs> I wish I'd a pound for every time I'd heard it. Uh, would have added very substantially to my pension pot, I can assure you. And um, I think that there are, uh, I, I mean, you could very easily fall into being quite depressed about it all. And it is somewhat depressing to think that these are very much the same sort of points that have been made over decades, frankly. I mean, I hardly recall a time through my career that I haven't heard these comments made. I do think that there is, however, uh, I think some of the aspects of um, what you're addressing specifically in this uh, do go back to sort of wider systemic issues and issues that social work has long identified around um, its identity, its role and function, what it actually contributes uh, to the overall um, uh, environment of health and social care. 
And I think that there are aspects of, and it perhaps was sort of slightly reflected in your numbers with, um, you know, the numbers of family and childcare, which you were reasonably happy with. Family and childcare would have been my general background, um, is, is around information systems. And, you know, social workers have been notoriously poor generally, uh, but there, it's not confined to just social work, so I wouldn't beat myself up too much about it, is in relation to information systems. And at the end of the day, an encompass will fall foul of this as well. So you can have a unified, standardized system. But if the populating of that system is less than it should be, it's inaccurate, it's not timely, then it will be dogged with all the same problems that uh, that they're already that are being articulated as it currently stands. Bureaucracy is a necessary evil, and it's trying to strand out what are the good bits about bureaucracy, what are the poor bits of bureaucracy. Bureaucracy um, is, you know, an awful lot of the work that is done is is to do with the governance, and that is essential in good social work practice should be capable of being able to stand over the practice that you do and to evidence that. Um, so those, those aspects of bureaucracy, so it is about how you make it as streamlined as possible um, and how you make it as, as easy for people as possible. It's back to, in a sense, you know, the bits of, you, you could get overwhelmed by all the strands that there are to this. But looking at the individual barriers, it does strike me that it's useful to just kind of break it up into bite-sized chunks and deal with those each of those individual things. It's not going to deal with the whole thing. It's not going to be a panacea. It's not going to be a whole solution. But nevertheless, if you break it up and break it down, if you can at least resolve parts of it incrementally, you'll make you'll be taking steps forward. And not, and that will feed in then to issues like recruitment and retention, which has always been a problem, and the pressures that there are on social work. I mean, it's a long time since I was knocking doors and even managing people who were knocking doors. And I do know that things are very, very different from uh, you know, what my experience has generally been. Um, but I do think that it, you know. <laughs> There are plenty of reasons to be uh, negative and to be a bit depressed about it all. But I do think that it's important that, um, you know, the change that is necessary, uh, digital technologies, all of those things are a critical part of the work that we do. And how well we um, understand those and embrace those has to be a critical component of what the general work looks like but there is no substitute for the relationship that is what social work is about and it's the unique thing that I took me many years in my career to finally for the light to dawn that what social work brings to the party in a way that I consider no other profession does is the understanding is the systemic way of working and the integration of systems so Social work is in a pole position, in fact, not to be on the reactive side, but of much more on a proactive side to talk about how these systems and ways of working actually benefit the end user and assist in actually making the whole system work in a much more productive in a much more productive way. Um, so. I, I, I'd be inclined to, you know, build on what you've done, absolutely, and to look at where the leadership needs to be, as you've rightly pointed out. Personally, I would think that the, um, you know, our regulatory body is the appropriate body for doing that, in conjunction with the um, research institutes, the universities, and to continue to do the work around the research, because good sound research is very makes it very difficult for politicians and for the uh, you know senior management not to address the issues. Bit long winded there.
sorry about that. Um, but those were some of my observations. Thank you, Katrina. That was really good. Uh, some things up quite well. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I think I think that I, I do. Uh, I mean, I think a lot of this here is around unique relationship based social work that I would like to see more of and get a chance to practice and see others get the chance to practice. And yeah, I do. I think that's a systemic way of working as very unique to social work. I see it with I work in a very much a multidisciplinary context and sometimes um, having that social work on site, bringing every part alongside and working in a very unique way and, and through relationships is crucial to what we do and trying to retain that is um, so important and I and and, I, and that's why I put up the slide about the sort of where's Wally slide because because I think sometimes when we're just being bureaucratic and we're just being bureaucracy driven or, or administrative driven you're wondering where where is where are the social workers here and it, where, where we we have more administrators than we have social workers and it, and that's part of the role that I don't want to see erode. I think technology gives us an opportunity. And you're perfectly right. We've been saying this go back right into the 1990s of the Monroe report and, and the serious adverse incidents that took place and the amount of reviews we talked about having people, um, social workers having to spend more time and build those types of relationships. But we're still seeing it within some of those very, even the most serious, recent serious case reviews that took place in England there recently. And for me, it's about, it's at, at this point in time, it's about getting this topic area back on the agenda and even making the smallest of gains. I talked to someone on my, our own training team, the Western Trust this week, uh, uh, even small gains about about making two forms one, um, uh, cutting parts out of the administration system. Because sometimes I think what where, where this has petered out in the past and what our yellow is, we, we try to be overly dynamic at the start and, and we don't get too far. And, and there's been a sense of maybe um, setting our, our targets very, very high. So uh, likes of having people who would maybe even make small gains uh, and eliminating some of the unnecessary barriers and bureaucracy and administration, where people would start to see that within their daily practice and routinely look at systems and routinely look at new um, legislation or policies they're bringing on and integrate them and blend them better. So everything, something new isn't always something extra and people can sort of get their heads above water a bit more. Okay. Any more questions, folks? Are we, are we've had enough bureaucracy and administration talk for one day. Um, I think Alison's going to leave my email address in the in the chat. Uh, if anybody I wants, it, I put it there on the chat. So I can Look, put it up again, Brian. So if anybody wants to have a chat or wants to get involved in any uh, pieces of work or any any projects or it wants uh any advice or information i'm obviously there it's, it's something that i'm particularly interested in and i see it as much as a start of um a, a conversation that that need, needs to be reignited again going to have you any uh, closing thoughts or uh as you draw <laughs> draws the close today tony no, and I, I take it everybody's ready for their lunch at, at this point. But I, I did put in those mechanisms of bureaucracy that we've discussed. Um, there's six or seven of them. I put that into the chat, um, like formatization, datafication, GDP, GDPRification, recordification, and formification. Um, they're all different ways that that other people. It seems to me uh, impose bureaucracy upon us. And keep us away from actually sitting down with the service user and and making that cup of tea and maybe sweeping the kitchen floor and building that relationship. You know, the legend has it that that's the way it used to be. I, I'm not sure it ever was really like that. But mm. if if we're all about relationships and if that's what we bring to the table, we're not getting a chance to do our relationships anymore. And uh, 
if you watch out for these mechanisms of bureaucracy, like G GDPR application where you can't you can't hand over details because of GDPR, but you can ignore the the problems that the service user has until you get those permissions, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And you know where GDPR becomes the be all and end all rather than the service user. Um, you know those kind of mechanisms of bureaucracy are are killing us. So I'll not hold you back any further. That's all I'd say. Brian, sorry, next just ask, um, is your research available online? Um, not yet. I'm hoping that myself and Tony will get together to publish um uh over the summertime. Um for those who are really interested, um I think you can probably access my my thesis at Ulster University from last week, but I'm hoping that we'll get a piece um um written over the summer will hopefully get published over the in, in one of the journals. Um but I th this um seminar will be um available uh, on on this and on YouTube for some time, isn't that right, Nelson? That's right, yes. Um so um as I said earlier, we will send the uh, information out to you when we have it um edited and available um with Brian's presentation and I did put the wee link on to the lunchtime seminar site. So you can, if you don't get the email, um, you can visit the recordings on the website as well. Um, Brian also mentioned about um, one of our upcoming lunchtime seminars. So I have put the link again, if you're interested in any of the seminars that are uh, planned for um, the coming months, you can view those on our events page of our website. So again, please take the time and go on and, and book yourself a wee slot. Um, Brian, thank you very much. Um, it's very interesting. There's been lots of activity on the chat today and yes. I will share that with you. And I suppose all's left for me to say is thank you everyone for turning up. And um, if you have any questions, you know, either email Brian or email myself and I can pass them on for you. Thank you very much. Thanks to everybody, thanks for everybody for turning up and uh, again, taking part and showing interest. And uh, it's been fantastic. So. I bid you all good afternoon and thank you so much.